If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Everybody and welcome to another edition of the interview show. I am here with the amazing Ted Rubin. Many of you know him on Twitter as the Return on Relationship Guy. He is at Ted Rubin on Twitter. He's actually at Ted Rubin, I think, everywhere, right, Ted? I'm pretty much at Ted Rubin everywhere. The only place that I am not is on YouTube. It's Ted Rubin USA. Um, only because of all their issues with how things connect into your Gmail accounts. And in order to have somebody work on my video, I had to give them access to my Gmail, so I had to open a separate account. Now, that, this was a while ago. Who yes. knows if they've resolved those issues by now, but I just keep it going the way it is. Yeah, I mean, look, my, my YouTube, my personal YouTube is slash Goldstein Media, because that's what my Gmail account is. Now right. everyone can spam me over there, you know. <laughs> but, you know, they, they fix things up there quite nicely, so... So, Ted, what have you been up to lately? I, I see you're, you know, you're very big on the return on relationship. What is return on relationship? Well, you know, uh, simply put, um, you know, people tend to overlook people. I, I've seen this happen so much in, in, in what's happening th these days. And what I like to say is that 2015 needs to be the year of what I call looking people in the eye digitally. You know, the last few decades of marketing tactics have made us lazy communicators. Most often we don't even pay attention to who we're talking to other than via the data we collect, and even that's a maybe. You know, in order to fix this, we really need to start benefiting from social relationships, both as individuals and companies, and we need to start looking people in the eye digitally. You know, a return on relationships, simply, simply put, is the value that's accrued by a person due to nurturing relationship. You know, ROI is simple dollars and cents. ROR is a value that's both perceived and real that will accrue over time through connection, loyalty, recommendations, and sharing. And it, the way I see it, it's used to define and educate companies, brands, and people about the importance of creating authentic connection, interaction, you know, and, and engagement. And, and if you really just want to boil it down to a few words, ROI is simple dollars and cents. R and ROR or hashtag R-O-N-R is about the people. Absolutely. And I've noticed that recently with a lot of you know, customer service. I mean, I'm sure you follow me there. You see me every once in a while. I'll go on a rant about some company and like back and forth. And then a lot of companies I feel are re realizing that it is about the relationship. And it is about don't send them to a forum. Call them up if they if have an issue or contact them on Twitter. So. Well, you know, some are realizing it. The biggest challenge we have is the silos that exist within these companies. So, you know, customer service very rarely reports into the marketing channel. Um, very often PR is a separate channel. It, it's an unusual company where the chief marketing officer has control of marketing, communications, PR, and customer service. And they really should because this is all the voice of the company. And what happens so often is marketing is out there shouting, you know, we love you, we want to do anything we can for you, we want our products to be great. And then you have people in customer service who basically their job is to because the majority of people take no for an answer and get off the phone, and they're rewarded in a different way. So for me, the real key here is bringing this all together. And the way I see it is that if you wrap a social shell around all of this, if you make it all socialized, that things get shared, that people have the ability to talk to other people, to listen, to communicate, to engage and interact, a lot of these problems will go away. But it, there's a fear factor involved, and it's not just because of the fear of what people are going to say. It's the fear of the hard work. This is not easy. 
Mm-hmm. It, this, this evolves every day. You have to be listening. You have to be paying attention. I mean, think about it. I mean, we're guys. We have trouble listening to our wives for a full day in a row. Exactly. I mean, imagine having to do it every day with people. I like to say that, that uh, brands are from Mars and consumers are from Venus. It's like the male-female analogy where, you know, the book, Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus. And brands have to learn to communicate differently if they really want to engage and connect with consumers these days. So you wrote the book on R on R. Um, it, was, it came out, like, two, was it two years ago? It was January 2013. I wrote that book with Catherine Rose, mm-hmm. um, and it came out in 2013. I just brought out another book this past January called How to Look People in the Eye Digitally, which is an extension off of Return a Relationship. Return a Relationship is my hub. It's my brand for everything I do. So the, the, I wrote about... I wrote about um, looking people in the eye digitally in that book, but now I've expanded it into a book of its own. And the book I'm working on now, which will hopefully come out before year end, is called The Age of Influence, which is also well, was, good. was part of Return a Relationship and now extending it into its own property. So, what are you doing with yourself lately? I mean, you were over at, where were you? You, you were at a company before as a CMO, right? Um, I was with Collective Bias for yes. close to three years. Um, I'm the fifth largest shareholder there still. Um, I left August of 2013. Uh, and now, you know, I do my own thing. I consult for a number of startups uh, I'm on a number of advisory boards. I do consulting for Fortune 500 companies. With uh, how to empower their employees, how to how to build return on relationship into their company, how to properly engage with people. Um, I speak around the world. Um, I just got off the phone with um, a group in London called Terrapin, and I am. And someone else is trying. And someone and else somebody is else is trying you. to call me. I am now turning that off so uh-huh. we can finish our call. Um, uh, and and I speak about return on. I speak about employee advocacy. I speak about customer advocacy, how to build advocates. I speak about what we can learn from our children and how we can be better, not only as as people, but as marketers, by paying attention to the way we communicate with our children and the way they interact. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like... And speak, yeah. speaking of children, I'm wearing my University of Pennsylvania hat. Yes. Because my daughter was just accepted Woo! early this year. In December, she found out that she's going to be going to U of P, so I probably will be in Philadelphia a little bit more often. Hey, we'll have to get coffee or some drinks. To all awesome. those Philadelphia companies there. Um, Watch look- out, heads on I'm the look- roll. I'm looking for a, uh, um, a, a, a consulting gig there, and I might even be willing to discount my services, so I have an excuse to see my daughter. There you go. I mean, you're, but you're based in Long Island, right? Long Island. I'm based in Long Island, yes. Long Island. And, and you also are in New York City, Eli. See, you know, you should- Follow online. He's very, very much a social media addict, as we like to say. You know, you follow him on Instagram. You can watch his different socks, daily sock games. Well, yes. Yeah, so my my hashtag is Ted Socky. I'm pretty well known for my socks. I have a Tumblr called We Heart Socks. I have a Pinterest page called We Heart Socks. I publish them on my on my Instagram. Um, it's become part of my personal brand. It's the way I engage with people and share with people, and it gives them a very w- easy way to engage with me. Um, I also post wherever I'm going to be, so if you want to know where I'm going, just check out my Instagram. It, it, Twitter, too, but it's a lot easier to see and not as busy, mm-hmm. and you'll know what cities I'm traveling to. I always look to engage and connect with people in those cities, so you know, I'd love to get together for a cocktail with anybody that sees me in any city that they live there or they're visiting like me. Mm-hmm. And Ted, so Ted and Rick Dragon got me into fancy, ugly, stylish, unique socks. So <laughs> that, you guys, my wife blames you guys. Well, good. She, she needs somebody to blame other than you because I'm sure you take a lot of blame for a lot of other things. Yeah, By the way, I, good I, about it, though, I, you know, I, so. I did see the great Valentine you got from your son Yes. Uh, on your Facebook page. Very nice. I miss those days. Yeah. It actually came in the mail, and it actually came in the mail outside of the envelope because the envelope got shredded. And <laughs> so all of a sudden I get this Valentine from him. I'm like, oh. So, you know, he's a little photogenic little guy, so it was very enjoyable. So, Ted, I you online. I know we kind of alluded to that, but like, I'd like to at least have a little chunk of where people can just go to and find you. I'm easy to find. I'm at Ted Rubin on Twitter. I'm Ted Rubin on Facebook. I'm at Ted Rubin on Instagram. Um, just Google Ted Rubin. The first three pages are basically all me, except for the 97-year-old Medal of Award winner from World War II. That's not me. But all the rest of the listings are me. So, Seth, before That's we get company. off here, That's good company, though. It is good company. But before we get off here, tell me something about what you're up to. We are doing a... 
the, the power work, meaning that I'm trying to reach into the Philadelphia startup re region by bringing people on like you and people on from the Philly startup scene and intermixing them in the interview show. We have the social media addict show as well, which is very nice. You know, it's it's more of a kind of a headline show. Right. We have a uh, we're, gonna, we're doing a, a show on autism and tech. We have a show on phones, which is you know every other wow. day. Wow, that must be cool. Yeah, it's fun. That's a fun show. I'm not part of that show, but my, one of my friends does that show. So we're we're building it out nicely, you know, and and people seem to be very responsive to it. So. Well, that's great. You know, Seth, I got to tell you, I just want to give you kudos. I love the way you reach out and engage. Uh, I, I, I really appreciate the way you've um, built a relationship with me, the way you ping me every once in a while, the way I hear from you. You know, you're, you're, you, I think you're a guy that really gets return on relationship. And, you know, I'm, and I'm thrilled to be here today. So I, and I'm honored that you asked me to be on the show. Oh, 